26 episodes. Diamonds have 26 sides just as a baseball field does. Special occasion tonight as it is my most amazing mom's birthday so give her a round of applause if you so desire. Many people have asked me over the course of the previous 25 episodes, what do you think will be the significance of reaching the milestone of 26 episodes? I remind them that marathons are 26 miles long and involve endurance, dedication and devotion. They ask me how that applies to Jabber John and I reply that I'm just giving good copy and have no clue how a marathon relates to Jabber John. But the girls like it when you mention athletic pursuits and wearing gold medals. I've lost my train of thought but pull up a camp chair in front of the <laughs> fire tonight and join us for ghost stories, betting tips, work gossip and the best singer songwriter east of the Pacific Ocean. If they ask for money at the door tell them you are a bird and they'll let you in for free as part of Mr. Moore's presentation. Take care. That's fun. I like not I didn't read that one first. <laughs> I'd like to hear them before we come right. right there. You should read them on Facebook. Well, I don't get them on Facebook. That's what I'm but telling you. It's just yeah. a Facebook post. But you're not sending it to me. Yeah, yeah you know, I was, when you came up the street, I was just kind of sending you guys there. Well, that's it's wrong. Wrong. really a waste of time, wasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> if you had just stayed at home four more minutes. <laughs> and we're live. <laughs> ding, 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 ding. Hey. And we're, and we're, and a little oh, Percy. Percy. We're live. Jabber John is live now. It's good to see everybody. I'm Nathan Moore. This is Steve Moore. Hi. Kyle Hogg. We are here for We are Jabber John. And it's just, no, we have nothing planned necessarily. We all just finally got in our seats at the very last minute here. Uh, working against the clock, but now we can take a breath and relax into the show. Welcome. If, wherever you're stop, watching, stop Facebook, arguing. Twitch, YouTube, I can see your chats here in our Discord server. So uh, chime in, let us know what's on your mind, and how you, how you two doing? Well, I'm doing okay. That's my new mantra is okay. I don't want to brag and say I'm doing good, and I don't want to depress yourself. And I don't want to be depress anybody and say I'm going bad. So I'm going to say the rest of my life, I'm going to say, okay. Even to you. Yeah. I, right. had, I had a person at work yesterday tell me, I asked them how they were doing, they said they were doing very okay. Very okay. I was like, that's, that's a weird thing I like thing that one. I like yeah, yeah. I might go there yeah, if I'm having a really, good day, a really good day, I'm going to say I'm, I'm doing very, very okay. Very okay. <laughs> I like it. Yeah. So yeah, we're okay. You might be noticing I'm using trying a different camera this time. Uh, hopefully, it's an upgrade on the visuals. But uh, look forward to seeing it. After. Does it have that X-ray thing where we're naked? <laughs> <laughs> it does. That Catherine can hit the button on that. Oh boy! I'm glad I got my legs crossed. <laughs> <laughs> and, I, and I'm sorry I have mine open. I'm at a cross. <laughs> I, I really need you guys this week because I'll tell you what, doing the news every day is starting to take its toll, I think. You know, I came oh. out of the gate with fun momentum, enjoying all the new technology, but now that I've just settled in and it's just me and the headlines, like over the, over time, I don't know. The headlines it's, are so depressing. They're so depressing. They, they don't put it on there unless it's, there's a guy up there so they won't let it in unless it's really depressing. Mm -hmm. um, What's up with that? Um, well, one of the one of my theories has always been what I call a soap opera theory, mm -hmm. uh, and that is that they put these beautiful people on on the afternoon when these uh, housewives were home and the husbands were having fun, and the housewives were home and they were depressed because they had a husband that was out having fun, and they were stuck there doing dishes and changing diapers and. Uh, they were, you know, they were unhappy and they had a dull life. But if you watch these beautiful people on TV in the afternoon and realize how shitty their lives were, because they're all getting, you know, raped or murdered or something bad's happened, there's always drama and it makes them feel better. Hmm. So it's the idea you're watching the news and it's so bad out there. At the end of the day, you say, "Well, at least I'm not there." Yeah, you just and, go out. The birds are chirping. Yeah, I'm the. You know, and you I got it pretty good. I'm doing better than I thought I was. Right. 
So it's by contrast, I think. Um, that's, that's my that's, theory. Mm, that definitely plays into it. Part of it, yeah. Do you do you read the news on the daily? No, I should. I used to watch no, it a bunch, I but I haven't. Say you should. <laughs> I think it's. I yeah, but the the plot's the same every night, and that's part of your problem is you're mm -hmm. going to run into the same stuff to deal with every day. Right. You know, it might be in Canada. Same one, stuff, different day. Yeah, same. And, it, and it's always... As soon as the wildfires in Canada go out, they'll flare be, up somewhere there'll else. Be, yeah, there will be a meltdown of some type of uh, nuclear weapon somewhere in Ukraine or something. Mm -hmm. So, But there will always be something. And there always is. So, But right. it's good reporting, but it's selective reporting, too. It is. Um, now, do we know if the Jewish aliens have anything to do with those fires like they did in California? According to Tucker Carlson, they do. <laughs> <laughs> Where is Tucker? I haven't seen him. He's on yet. Twitter now. Is he? Well, I don't do Twitter. He did his first broadcast on Twitter since he got fired from Fox yesterday. Really? And it was alarm. I mean, it's disturbing. He's always had that scary, dark edge to him or whatever, but now that he's unleashed on Twitter, I was... I was pretty shocked watching it. I was like, this, it, it really reminds you of like early Nazi Germany okay. stuff. Ooh, like he's. Really? But, was, but he had like a huge record breaking amount of viewers I heard for that first show. Oh, he did? Yeah. On Twitter? Yeah. He had what? Like a huge, like just more than any other show it ever had. Really? But I, I, but, but I heard it was like terrible. It looked like a kindergarten person put it together, they said. It was really shocking just how. I don't, I don't, I don't even know how to describe it. He, 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 when he talked about Zelensky in Ukraine, he, 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 his first description of him was a sweaty rat faced. Oh God! I mean, it was like, Ooh. it was, it was really, really weird, really, oh really gosh. disturbing, and I, I don't really understand. For for years now, I've sort of been dismissive of all the talk about a rise in fascism to the I'm like I'm like well I don't know if that hyperbole is necessary maybe it's even destructive to accuse people of being fascistic or something like that like maybe that language isn't wise but I don't know it, there does seem to be an alarming rise in talk about the degeneracy and stuff that's destroying our culture and and rising figureheads that have this dark hateful bent to them that is very scary I don't, mm -hmm. I don't know what's going on I, I i wish i could understand it even even people i used to respect are saying things that scare me but it's the way they're framing it the way they're talking about things it's like why is this happening right and i don't i i wish i wish i could understand it i i do understand how Sometimes they would be inspired to have that kind of rant on their porch or something, but the idea that they're willing to put this content into the world right. as if it's an important thing is, I don't, I don't know. Well, I, I, as <clears throat> my friend Rick says, follow the money. Follow the money. Yeah, there, right? there's got to be some way he's, there's people making money on it, and that's where, if you look at it somewhere, I think. Is that the bottom line? In Amer I, in this country, sure. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I don't think it's all around the world, but in this country, greed and making money is uh, beating all the other angles. Is it possible that that's why they started doing it, and then they started to believe their own fear mongering, and now they've worked themselves up into some kind of fascistic dizzy that they actually that's well, what I've thought about that like is Tucker Carlson like an actor like I mean he seems like he might have some intelligence he can't believe all this mumbo jumbo he's talking well I mean he, it, it was it was revealed that during the Trump stuff that he didn't believe the stuff he yeah. was saying on air because the text messages came right. out in the court case and they're like well this is what he said on air and here's how he's talking right. about this so stuff it's like he said that he's getting paid a bunch of money to just Rebel rouse and, but how do you go to sleep with that weight on your shoulders? It's, right. 
just business. Mm -hmm. It's just, they're just, I'm an actor and there are people that want to hear it and I'm giving them what they want to hear. It's so sad that that's that profitable, that hate is that profitable. Yeah. Is, is, well, yeah. I know it's part of human nature, but it's, I don't, I don't know. I wish love was more profitable. It seems well, like there's still a lot. There's a lot of money being made there too. <laughs> Is there? <laughs> oh, yeah, sure. <laughs> sure. I saw a thing a couple of days ago. It was a a guy, very very go getter guy. He was a public speaker, and he was down in his basement. He had gotten two speaking gigs. He was very excited. And his wife came down and said, "Look, I'm not." You can do what you want to do, but I just want to tell you, this is the pie chart, this is the family here, and this is the love that we have for the family, and this is the money we have, and this is a complete pie. We don't need anything else. Everything else you do that takes you away from the family, that's for you. That's not for the family anymore. We have everything we need. You know, so every time you're away from us for a six weeks doing a talking tour or something, that's for you. That's money that you want. And that's like what... like. Tucker Carlson can't realize, why don't we reel it back a little bit and talk some... He seems like he's smart enough he could talk real stuff, too, if he wanted to. Mm -hmm. But as long as they keep shoveling that money at you, it's like, you know... Or maybe he is a sadistic freakazoid, you know? Yeah, well, if you're selling snake oil, that's what you're going to push, and that's what you're going to say. That's true. And that's what his, he's, that's his product. Mm -hmm. And that's the job he's been given, and he's just saying, I got the role of the bad guy in the play. And that's the way he you know, probably rationalizes it, because I agree. He probably knows better mm -hmm. uh, in his heart, but uh, that's just not what he's doing. Mm -hmm. he's, yeah, uh, but there so are how, do you, how do you go up if there's a profit motive to the to divide us and to sow so hate into the culture? How do you compete with that? Like how do you how do you stop that? Well, you know, it goes back to I think that the destructive the destructive part of it, the violence. Um, it, it goes all cultures and wars. It goes all the way back. You know, every society, to the Aztecs, to the Incas, to the Roman Empire, it's, it's all about, it's real easy to, to, just, to make something using negative stuff. In other words, you can go in and kill, pe kill farmers, but what happens after you kill them? What goes on then? Because eventually you'd have to have the farmers and they're going to come back and what are you going to do? You don't know how to do anything but kill, and you've killed what you killed, and you're worthless. But so, in terms of the long-term thing, the violence and these things don't work. But in terms of the short term, they always work mm -hmm. because it's easier to destroy than it is to build. Mm -hmm. So what you have are a lot of people in this country trying to build a better world, and then there's just people that are just saying. I'm going to I'm going to do what I can to tear all this down and do it our way mm -hmm. because it doesn't satisfy me this way but that's my take I don't know I'm mean, talking too much I'm sorry No you're great J Dodd he comes in with right out of the gate like Kramer visiting us my guys <laughs> <laughs> hey, Why does good change hey, take so long and bad change happen so quickly Yeah that's what we what were is, just talking a, about Is that a line from a song why does good change take so long? I don't know. It could be. <laughs> but that, that rings sure. a bell. Yeah, that's exactly what I was pretty much just saying, I think. It's, it's uh, I mean, I guess it, 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 it has been. I mean, take a house. Okay. It takes you a day to tear down a house. Right. It takes you a year to build a good house. Mm -hmm. You know, it's just, that's just the nature of of construct versus destruct. So that part of it's pretty. It's just such a shame that the destruction is profitable. It just obviously is not a good thing. If you're tearing down a perfectly good house, just the, the fact that we have to exist where there's a profit motive for destruction and for hate, and it's that's the thing that drives me crazy because we're never going to be able to compete with a profit motive. 
What kind of after school special ending, what kind of inspiring thing could I say about how it's better to love if you're getting paid to destroy? I can't compete with that. Well, well it's so, I mean, I've always, it breaks my heart, but I sort of want to understand if, you're, if you don't have anything and you go out, like when I lived in New Jersey, they built this beautiful park, you know, weight lifting stuff and swings and stuff. And within like two weeks, people would start tearing it up. And I can sort of understand if you don't have something that just, you know, it's frustrating to see that everybody has all this stuff. That's, I can sort of understand that. Sure. But I, these people that are this, like this political stuff, these are rich people. They don't need anything. Right, right. They're, they're not destroying because they don't have it. They're just, you know, I can't, that's what I can't understand. I can't understand their motive for doing it. Right. You're already so yeah, you're rich. Where you, you, could, be. you could really just spend the rest of your life yeah. helping the people around right. you. Yeah, it's so frustrating. It's not like they have something you don't have, so you just feel jealousy or, you know, just, you know, I just want to break this swing, you know, you know, just because I never had a swing growing up or whatever. It's like, <laughs> I just can't understand. It's like the cycle of war is like that. It's, it's, you know, like in the, in the 60s when they were writing all these beautifully naive folk songs because it seemed like for the first time in human history, people were contemplating peace in a new way. You had John Lennon, and like there was this, this, there was this palpable feeling in the air that maybe we can just break through the consciousness into a new paradigm where we don't kill each other anymore. And it seemed like it was the first time that humanity had taken a moment to even think that way. I know that's not necessarily true, but it seemed after thousands and thousands of years of just war being the accepted norm, the the 60s, or it seems like in, you know, in the last hundred years was the first time we tried to dabble in the consciousness of like, maybe we could end war forever. Uh -huh. And there was this little moment where like, yeah, this we could maybe do this. If everybody just agrees, we have mass communication for the first time. We can actually send a message out to the whole world. Like that was part of the right. the thing. We could actually all have a global conversation about this stuff and maybe just agree to stop killing each other and let's do this. And And next thing you know, war breaks out and that whole thing just sort of fizzles. And, and here we are back to war being just a normal thing and all that hopeful naivety is now jaded, and and I, I, I don't I don't know. I, f I feel like that there was a little bit of innocence in there that was crushed. Yeah, well, I'm not. I, I wouldn't say it was crushed. I, that's it's still around. Uh, we, you know, it hadn't reached everywhere. There are lots of places it hadn't been, but. I, I think things are changing. Uh, I think I think Vietnam was a big deal. Um, I said all along in the 60s, I saw it, what was coming. I said, we'll get out of Vietnam when enough, enough of our kids are dead. And it wasn't their kids, it's our kids. When we send enough young men over there and young women over there that don't come back and families are impacted, then things will start to change. And that, I think, you know, everybody talks about that part of it, but that, I think that had a profound effect. And those families are still feeling the effect of losing someone in Vietnam. And mm -hmm. there's a lot of people in, that were in Vietnam that are still trying to get over it. It's a, it was a horrible thing. And I, the net effect of that is we don't want to do that. So now we we've decided we don't we're not going to send our soldiers over there, but we'll send you our bombs, mm -hmm. and uh, that's the next thing we've got to work on trying to stop doing that too, maybe. But yeah, that uh, is the sad thing because they just was like, well, all right, drones. <laughs> yeah. The war the war machine still had to turn on, but they realized that the draft wasn't going to work, and we didn't want to send our our kids over to do this stuff, so now they're just doing robots yeah. and drones. And yeah, it's just sad. It is sad. But that's, but that's a phase we'll have to go through, too. Or, uh, but I hopefully we, you know, the whole thing about it is when you start getting depressed and 
This has been pretty depressing. To yeah, sorry so, about that. <laughs> sorry. I just want y'all to talk but, me but, out of this. Well, I'll talk you out of it right now. On we go to the park mm -hmm. and watch the children play, and we're only one generation away from changing everything you've said today. Those children could grow up and just say, this is just ridiculous. Mm -hmm. And it could change very quickly. It's like I was talking with a friend today about this whole climate change thing where we used to think that climate change would take so many, so many thousands of years or hundreds of years. Now we realize that the domino effect of these catastrophes, once a glacier starts melting, it doesn't just go incrementally, it goes uh -huh. exponentially. And it, it can happen very quickly. Mm -hmm. But so can the, the good, right. so can love. And we could, we could end up, you know, uh, getting rid of, uh, of not replacing Tucker when he has to leave us. Right, right, right. <laughs> you know, not needing him anymore. Right. But right now somebody needs him, so he's out there. So it's it's not it's not that's something you have to give up on. Right. Uh, but you know it's always uh, important to look at the children. Yeah, that's and see a, how fresh it, those brains e are. There's eternal hope in that respect that right. the next generation could be inspired to. Yeah, exactly. Do it right. Yeah. But see, that also scares me. It's like I read something. You know, you have, you always have to remember not everyone was raised the same way you were. Well, that just scares me to death, these kids, you know, out in these communities where it's like, you know, the parents are just following Tucker Carlson and they telling their kids that stuff like, oh, my gosh. I mean, it just, I mean, you, that's just the way they're raised, you know. Well, this family's raised, you know, love everybody well, and be yeah. nice and help. It's just, and it, it, the scary thing to me was growing up, like, probably just, you know, naive. I just thought everybody was like, like the people I hung out with, pretty open minded right. and just but then you like then when you, all this Trump stuff started happening, I was like, This can't be real and I was like, Man, did I not even know like what country I lived in? Like I didn't realize how much meanness and stuff was here. Like you just that's like you become complacent I feel like Man, I should have been even nicer to people, you know. It's like you feel like you're lazy because you like you let all this meanness happen. Mm hmm. Well, yeah. but it was shocking. That'll be my luck. I'll try to take Dad up on his advice and go to the park, <laughs> and all the kids will be beating each other with sticks. I'll be like that. that Did you hear what Tucker Carlson said? <laughs> <laughs> it didn't work at all. Or, I, went, I went to the wrong place in the park there. Yeah, that, or the police will have you down, down. He's been hanging around. around Why well, did kids? I mean, just look at it. He, he looks to like. In I the mean. <laughs> I saw him down. I saw him down with the kids. He was pooping on paper. I don't know what was going on. <laughs> Anna Bloom, welcome to the show. Good to see you. April says, "Amen, Mr. Moore," to what you said earlier. It was that was good. That was what I needed to hear. They're saying we need Elliot back. <laughs> yeah, well, well, Elliot wouldn't have let us go that far. <laughs> it's, it's another way. It's like if nobody trusts. When I was leaving work today, it was a mother. Well, I guess it was a mother. It was an adult woman and a little girl who had this sparkly, fantastic dress on. And I so wanted to slow down and yell out the window, oh, my God, you look, that's, I love that dress. And I thought if I did that, I would be on the phone like, some old dude just yelled at my daughter that he liked her, you know. I was like, yeah, it's like nobody trusts anybody anymore. Well, that's, that's not true. But, but, I, but you do have to watch out. I've been warned twice to stay away from the park. Because, uh, children, if you don't have a child, it's not really a cool idea to go up there and sit and right. stare at other people's children. I, I might have to take that back. <laughs> well, walk around the duck yeah, pond. Yeah, just walk through the park. Take walk walk around in. the duck pond and just look at them at the side of your <laughs> I got nice kids. <laughs> <laughs> you got some nice children there. <laughs> and then they get the thing out. <laughs> then the father turns around his MAGA hat and looks at me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. When I had my, the, the last dog I had was a big, lovable dog, but she just didn't like other people. Like, 
people were like, "What I, kind of dog was it?" It was a big, huge hound dog. Hound, hound yeah, dog. Yeah, blue tick. I think it was a blue tick hound. And but people would always ask, "Can they pet it?" And I was like, "You know, because you never knew when she would just like snap at you." So yeah. um, this one time, it was a man and a woman coming, the young people, and the guy had a. Um, he had a southern, uh, you know, the southern flag hat on, and I was like, oh, okay. I mean, what, who knows what that means to the guy? But anyway, I just took it as like, probably we wouldn't probably be friends. But anyway, so he stops. They say, "Can I pet your dog?" And I said, "I said no, not really, not because of the way he looked or anything, but just because I didn't want him to bite him." Yeah. And the girl said, "Fuck you." <laughs> I think she thought I said it, which was partially true because I. Even if the dog didn't bite, if the dog didn't bite, I'd say, yeah, you can. But maybe she saw me looking at his hat and, you know, but I was like, man, it's gotten to that point, you know, where like, I, what if I said, yeah, and he just bit down on his hand. Thank you for letting me pet the dog, you know. <laughs> this if she only knew the truth that you were being nice anyways. <laughs> <laughs> Even though I was prejudiced, I was being nice. <laughs> I was very tempted to. But when oh, she, yeah, sure, but take she your said chances. it, it's like you don't you don't expect to hear stuff like that. No, I mean, I, if she has, like some people will say, "Why? Why can't?" I was like, "Oh no, she you know might bite you or whatever." Yeah, just, well, the, she, just she the didn't old, like you from the, just the, the old the, f you. When she saw you walking up, <laughs> she didn't like you. <laughs> <laughs> He's one of them goddamn liberals. <laughs> what he is. <laughs> Oh, my God. She was right. Well, we have a break in the action. You want to go do a bird? I, I, that sounds like a perfect call. All right. I like the I like breaking the action. Uh, yeah, smoke. we were heading into a rabbit hole. <laughs> <laughs> They're everywhere. There's a lot of rabbit holes. Oh my gosh. Well, this is. When I'm asked what's my favorite bird, I, this is the one I always say. Mm. Oh, you have wow. a favorite bird. I don't, but this is what I always say because it's <laughs> in the discussion. Uh, <laughs> when the kids at the park ask me, this is the yeah. favorite bird. <laughs> well, now there was a famous old guy that used to say, uh, my little chickadee. Mm, chickadee. <laughs> and I always thought he was a little weird. You know, but, uh, but so the bird is called a chickadee. That's a fun word. It's a it's great fun word. To say. It's a good word to say. It's much better than crow. Mm -hmm. Right. <laughs> or vulture. Yeah. Right. It's much better. Oh, yeah, that's well said. Uh, and he is in the category with the wren of being cool personalities, little but spunky and just. He just runs the woods. He, 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 they travel in little flocks through the woods, and other birds will go with them because the, these are very alert and they travel. and And they, if they see or hear a hawk or anything, they they are alert. So the other birds know their call, and when they get sighted, they know that there's something to be afraid of. Oh, wow. So the other birds travel with them. So you'll see titmice and chickadees and downy woodpeckers. Well, usually there's a downy woodpecker following along in nuthatches, and uh, they travel through the woods. You get a great little caravan of thieves. Well, that's fun. Yeah. I, I'm just appreciating listening to you talk how, how well named so many animals were. It's like you know, vulture. It's, it, it just it, you can feel it in the yeah. sounds of the word. You know. Chickadee. Yeah. <laughs> chickadee. Now, if a ch you know, if a vulture was called a chickadee and a chickadee was called a vulture, you'd, it would be unsettling. That would be hard. That would yeah. be hard. You're but right. It, it, well yeah. named. Until you get to titmouse. Right. <laughs> and then, <laughs> then I have issues. Right. Of course, a relative of the titmouse oh, is the, uh, is the uh, bush tit, which is, if anything, worse. <laughs> <laughs> right. I mean, that was a sick mother there, uh -huh. <laughs> that, whoever he was. You're also in the chickadees. Definitely. Now, are chickadees all over the United States, or is that a local thing? They're, they're all over. The camera's having a little trouble focusing on this guy, on these. Now, are these, are these birds, are, do they, like, are the people that give them the names identified, or is that just... 
history. Well, it was happening in the 1800s, and these guys were coming over from Germany and England. They were, you know, they were scientists and taxonomists, and they were doing the naming. So Audubon did a lot of it, and they used Latin and names, and then they gave them common names. A lot of the common names were ones that the Indians or the native the settlers already used. So they picked up on the common names, but the... Now is a chickadee, does it make a sound sort of like that? Or yes. Okay. Chick, 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 chick. Okay. So it, it, it's, it's based on the sound. Okay. A lot of, the, some of these are Indian names and some of them just, or color, you know, just different things. But, so you have the, uh, we do have a little issue. In the Northeast, it's a, it's a bigger bird. He's a little bit bigger. It's a subspecies, but it's called a black cat chickadee. Black cat? Black cat. Cat. Perfect. Uh, I thought you said I mean, black it's cat. It's a perfect too. name, little mm -hmm. black cat. On the, on the, and that's then, a cool looking chickadee. And that's the one I've out west. One like They're that. out, out the west north the, in the north. Is that what you have, Swaby, with the red and, or brownish? With some brown on red, it. Brownish red. They look pretty, you know, the one we have around here is called, a, and this is here we go again. Carolina chickadee. Oh, you know, Carolina's really claimed a Well, lot it's of... that one guy that's from Carolina. I'm, right. I just hate him. Mm -hmm. I mean, if he'd been from Virginia, I'd have liked him. Right. But that's the way it is. Right. But if it's not, it should be a Virginia chickadee. We all know that. Right. They call it a Carolina chickadee. So there you go, once again. <laughs> uh, but the Carolina chickadee is one you probably have at your feeder. But there is a transition transition here, and we're in Virginia between the north. So we we will you will see the. But how do you tell the difference? There's not a whole lot of difference. The black cap is a little larger, but it's it's, it's a it's a large. If you saw them both side by side, you could tell the larger one. But mm -hmm. so there's not a whole lot of difference. And there and the other thing I did read today that I didn't know is that they are able to interbreed. Mm -hmm. The black captain to Carolina, so that makes it even more confusing. Right. So you're getting the mix, a hybrid of the both of those, but they have a different in the different one in the Southwest. This is that one you sell was in the Northwest. So they're all they're all across America. They all they're not migratory, so they live where they live. You know, now if it gets real cold up north, they might fly a little further south, but you know they'll. That's just so he says he's got the black capped chickadees in his yard in Utah. Uh huh. Yeah, and they they they're they're all over. So um, are but, they migratory? No, hmm. no. And uh, but they you know they they do cover some ground, but uh, they pretty much the ones you have are the ones that live around here and they spread out. You know, like the young ones will have to move to get away to a new territory if they have to. But, uh, well, what about feeding, they, uh, they over 50%, about at least 50% is, uh, is uh, bugs and spiders and things like that, uh, mm -hmm. organic matter. They need protein, they need certain proteins. I was reading that they, in the wintertime, they'll eat a lot of, they'll invest, they'll go in and get into a spider's nest and uh, eat dead spiders or the spiders that are in mm. you know they'll, they'll eat spiders to get a specific protein from the spider's body who would have mm. who would have thunk that mm. who did that research <laughs> but uh they uh now they come to feeders and that's why so many people are familiar with them they're a very common feeder bird the reason they like the main reason they like feeders is they like sunflower seeds. Oh wow! And they they catch. It's said that they can put up to a thousand sunflower seeds a day, and hide them in the trees what? for winter time. A thousand. <laughs> that's a lot of travel. That's, 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 that's a lot. Amazing. Of, that can't be real. Well, that's how many can they move at once? Not one at a time. But they remember, Just one at a time. They remember where and they, they are. And they can remember. Generally speaking, maybe not every one of them, but a gen All in right, general, statistics. they know where they're 24 hours, a thousand. How many is that? That's like 50, a, like a 50 an hour. If they work every. Yeah, that's a lot of that's five. a lot of going back and forth. Now, what they'll do if they're feeding on the sunflower seeds is that they'll take the sunflower seed and poke it into the thing, and then they'll peck on it because they don't have the beak that'll break it open. 
So they just peck it and open it and then pull out the protein. I'd like so, to see us a video of that. Yeah. But they got some good footage of that somewhere. Do you have them in your backyard? I'm sure you do have, have them. I, I don't have a very many, but occasionally I'll get them. Uh, now, when I lived out in the country, I had a chickadee, right? But yeah. they're not, you know, they're not as common. Yeah, you as just the, don't have it. We just don't. I don't have the terrain for them. Mm -hmm. They live over in the woods across the road, and they they'll come over occasionally. But when I see one, it makes me happy. Mm -hmm. But I don't see them all the time like I did when I lived out in the country. Uh, they were there all the time. As long as I had sunflower seeds, I had chickadees. So. But they're like wrens. They like to. They're very curious. They're very brave. They'll take on a something's bothering their nest. They'll take it on a bigger bird and challenge it. And uh, now perky. the birds, of, the birds that follow them, they don't take advantage of them, do they? No, they're a community. Okay. They all. It's it's a, it's like the love. They love the love. They all love each other. Um, but a hawk would see dinner, and he flies into a tree, and then they all scatter. Right. Mm -hmm. So it's pretty. Uh, let's see what else did I learn? Oh, here was something I learned a day. I I was I wondered about this before. Was uh, what did the birds see? And they and I was reading something in this fancy book book of Sibley's that uh, the chickadee can see ultraviolet light. What does that mean? Well, it means that his eyes can pick up on the wavelengths or frequencies. Ours what? Or see visible light. And some people's eyes only see certain frequencies, so they're colorblind. Hmm. But the, some things, like a frog, which sees an ultraviolet world. And so they're in, they're, they're in that. We don't see it. We can't see that color at all. Hmm. You're making me feel inadequate compared to the chickadee. Well, all the all the sunflower seeds it can get. The way yeah, well, it can see. in lots of ways we are. It's a little Plus, primer they don't on declare what, war. What ultraviolet light is. <laughs> hmm? What is ultraviolet again? It's ultraviolet is just off the spectrum of violet. You know, you have Roy G. Bibb, red, orange, yellow, and blue, and you go violet. Well, the next doesn't just stop at violet; it keeps on going. Gotcha. And so the next frequency down is ultraviolet. So it's like last week when I was talking about not being able to hear certain frequencies. Mm -hmm. and vision's the same way. There's frequencies you can see, and so uh, what was interesting was that the uh, chickadee, when it sees in the ultraviolet, the male looks different than the female. But to our eyes, the male and female look the same. Hmm. And I thought that was fascinating. That is fascinating. And to, that they're seeing a different, basically they see a different world than we see. Mm -hmm. They see things we don't see and probably we see things they don't see. But uh, I thought, I always wondered what other animals, you know, you always wonder what they see. What, what is it about dogs are colorblind? Is, are dogs colorblind? Yeah, I think so. What is that? So it's, they're not Dichromatic. Mono. Yeah, it would be kind of similar to um, losing the red. I think it would be the red for somebody who's colorblind. So they're dichromatic, not monochrome. So it's not black and white, but it's instead of trichromatic, dichromatic. And I think it's the red that they don't have. Okay. Interesting. Yeah. But, you know, every animal's eyes are a little, you know, evolved differently to see different things, and so. Uh, now, who talk about research? Who decided let's research and see how all different animals' eyes work? And uh, how, how would they know that? Well, that's a good. That's a great question. How would you design that experiment? Because you have to implant them in a human's uh, you'd head. Maybe set up a food, a Pavlovian thing, where you get food if you see this picture. You know, so if they show a color and he pecks it, he must have seen it. Right. But if he that doesn't, does make sense. So that's that's the kind of studies you're probably talking about. Mm -hmm. I know we can't. I know dogs can't see red, but we have a new listener tonight. Can I show his picture on TV? Absolutely. Who, who do we got? Terry from Richmond. All right, Terry from Richmond. Welcome to the show. Hey, Terry. Thank you. Is, can you see him? There's Terry. 
<laughs> he's on TV. And he's wanting to call in, but we don't have a call in, so he wants to comment. Oh. What's, what's he saying? Uh, what did he just show? I showed his picture. He's in Richmond, sitting back, enjoying the show, oh, loving okay. it, but wants to comment. Maybe someday we could do a, have a little speaker in here and do a call-in show, talk to people that are watching out that there. That would be great. Just a, a special episode. I can right. maybe figure out that technology. Yeah. I love geeky tasks like that. Nathan, <laughs> let's do a call-in show next time. All right, I'll try to figure that out. I'd love a task like that. Going out to the radio shack, we'll figure this out. Is he still on screen? He slid a little bit. We're a little bit narrower than yeah. usual. How many of y'all right? How many of y'all used to frequent Radio Shack? We just found out that Nathan was a huge fan of Radio Shack. Big fan of Radio Shack. I used to go. I used to go in there when eight tracks were going out of style, and they were nine nine cents. You could get Lou Reed and eight tracks. You could get like all these great Bob Marley eight tracks. Did you for ever do eight cents. tracks? Never. You never did. I don't, I don't remember. I've never, never had. I never had an eight track collection. That's interesting. Yeah. Because when was that? That came in between well, cassettes. Was was, cassettes and CDs. Yeah, in between cassettes and CDs. Yeah. No, eight tracks was before that. Was eight tracks before yeah. cassettes? Before, before CDs. Yeah, it was like albums and eight tracks then cassettes. Okay. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Yeah. Mom had a pretty big eight track collection. I remember the Commodores. Yeah. Really? Bread. Yeah. But for, I, for some never... reason, Radio Shack would just get like you just go in and be like one of those cardboard boxes. So we had to dig down, you know, just hundreds of them. And my mom would give me like ten dollars, and they were ninety nine cents a piece. So you could get like nine, you know, ten albums for you know ten dollars. Perfect. <laughs> and then the song would stop right in the middle while it would switch over to that <laughs> sound, you know, like right in the middle of the <laughs> right in the middle of the song, right? They were like, Percy's lost his ball back there or something. We have to go help him out. He's he's whining a little bit back there. You all right, buddy? Come here, buddy. But you probably, you might know John Fahey. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the, one of his last albums, like way after eight tracks were out of style, he put out one of his last albums only on eight track. <laughs> That's so weird. <laughs> eight track was weird. It was like four banks, right? Yeah. Like you couldn't fast forward or no, rewind. You, you no could control. skip to another yeah. section of the record. Like right. it was broken into four, mm -hmm. and they were big. They were about about that big. It was pretty viscerally satisfying shoving it yeah. into the. <laughs> and it, the it, it had track it had the picture the like the album cover right there on the front on the back at all the songs listed. Right, it's it was pretty Star Trek. It's like I don't even remember it. Like, right, you you missed just, that. It was your I just generation. Ignored them, and I was I lived through it, but I ignored it. Right, I thought it was something you put in a truck. <laughs> <laughs> That didn't. I don't know what that meant. <laughs> but, uh, no. Well, it wasn't standard issue, I guess. I wonder if Mom like had her eight-track player installed in the well, car. Well, I think for it was a fad for a while. Yeah, my, my my dad had a truck, had an eight-track player. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but they, but they also made like really cool. They I used to see them at thrift stores, but it'd be like it looked like a space helmet, and it, it, like a, this round thing with the antennas on it, and you put this cassette in there and you push the buttons one two three or four like totally cool you know i guess that was gonna be the it big felt thing. star trekky or something yeah the sound quality was never and the tapes didn't last it was like it was thicker or it was wider than like a cassette tape and you know kill you could kill them yeah yeah mm -hmm. like a cassette tape at least you could put a pencil in there and <laughs> roll it once right. that one broke you just toss it in the you trash. could even you could even take a cassette tape and Unscrew it or something. I definitely repaired a lot oh, of yeah. cassettes in my day. Yeah, cut out Pull the it out, <laughs> get a little piece of scotch tape and tape it back together and it would work again. I'm gonna, I'm gonna help Percy out of here. He's, he's lost his ball or something. Well, Any other got, uh, questions about chickadees and we'll close up the chickadee story. I'm just very impressed with a thousand sunflowers a day. A thousand sunflowers a day. Well, I read that. Oh. I, I, that seems oh. like that's impossible. I'm impressed that somebody would put a thousand bird, a thousand sunflowers in a bird feed. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, you know, if they keep eating them, we'll keep feeding them. Duh. No. Hey, Heather. Good to see you. Hey, Heather. <laughs>
Heather, did you go to Radio Shack? Oh, right. We're talking about Radio I love Radio, radio Shack always reminds It's that walking into Radio Shack is like that scene at the beginning of a James Bond movie where he's taken down to the basement and he's given his new gadgets for this mission. Right. It's like, oh, well, this is, it looks like a shoe, but it's actually a rocket well, <laughs> so was, you can fly around. It was almost like going into like a club because I always felt like I was out of my, like, these people all know stuff that I don't know. <laughs> Mm -hmm. <laughs> like these people all know how to work with you know solder some wires together and get this thing to work and i was like just where's the eight tracks you know <laughs> and it was you know like before the internet and all that kind of stuff so the only way you knew a new technology had been invented or existed was to right. go into the to see it suddenly on right. the shelves right. and there was you know all kinds of inventions and new gadgetry that was you just walk in, I'm like, I didn't know they made that. Like, I'm sure the, you know, first remote control cars and stuff like that, there's, <clears throat> there's only one way to find out. Couldn't go online and see the new technology. Now you can, and I don't know if either of y'all caught this, but have y'all, did y'all see the new technology Apple unleashed this week? I uh, didn't catch, no. Tell us about it. They've got, they've got, Apple has just come up with their version of the virtual reality goggles. And? It looks incredible. Like, their, their twist on it is most of the virtual reality goggles, before you put them on and you're, you, you're closed off. It's like claustrophobic, you can't see anything. Apple's taken, taken it to a new place where you can, it has all these cameras on the front, like five, six or seven different cameras all pointing in different directions. So you can actually see through the goggles into the world. So if I was looking through them right now, I, I would see Kether over there and the camera and everything. But then I would have, I could have apps and stuff on, on top of it. I don't know, it's a whole being able, they're oh, calling so, it augmented reality as opposed to virtual reality, which is a whole separation from the real world. This is trying to augment reality oh with the digital stuff. Do they have that x-ray thing on there where you take them clothes off of the girl? <laughs> yeah, I think you got to order that from the back that. of a comic book. I can't I've seen I, that on TV. I, I can I can't wait for a couple of years to see people driving down the road with their Apple glasses on, watching their apps and stuff while they're also driving. Oh. <laughs> what world are you driving in? It's definitely surreal. One thing that's pretty interesting is if Kethra was wearing the goggles and and she could see us, then we would see her eyes through the goggle. Oh, but man. it's actually not her eyes. Like, we would think that we could see her eyes, but there's actually screens on the outside of the thing, too, <laughs> that would, that are using cameras on the inside. Actually, actually, it's not even using cameras on the inside. It it scans your face, so it knows your face, so it can show a simulation of your eyes to I mean, the so outside I'm get, so world. I'm get, it's sci-fi. It's I'm getting weird. confused. Like, the ones I've wore... It's like you're in like a battlefield or something. Mm -hmm. This is totally this. This is not for. Well, games. you could do that in these. Okay. Yeah, you could have, you could have all the, anything that you want. But the blood's real. <laughs> <laughs> you're, yeah, you're actually fighting in a be, war somewhere. You in might the world. have to go to the hospital. After. <laughs> well, I've done those a couple of times. That I, it's like I just lose balance and everything. So you feel like you're in. That's one thing that's cool about these. Without taking it off, you can just sort of hit a button and see the world around it. So like, but, but, but you could also use it to like, like you could you could be wearing them and watching your computer screen, but also seeing the headlines in your vision, right? But, but mm -hmm. that, oh, okay. So if you wanted to watch a movie, you could decide. Like you could you could have it just look like a big screen TV in front of you, but you'd still see the rest of the real world around it. Or you could just hit a button and it would. Oh you know, you could bait. Here, here's an interesting use Ooh. of the technology. Here, here's one thing that you'll you'll be able to do in the future you'll be able to pay like 10 bucks to have a courtside seat at like an nba final and and because of the technology it'll you if you look this way it looks that way if you, you know like they'll just have all they'll have is like a a thing on courtside with a million different cameras 
and then it's all wired into the goggles and everybody for 10 bucks you could be sitting here and and completely be oh courtside at an nba final and it will fight in real time and live happening if you look this way what whichever the way it already works all right so see how this is like my phone and there's all these different apps so wherever the negative space is if you were looking at it through your goggles you would see the world on the right. other side now the one of the cool technologies that this has is apparently the eye tracking is so unbelievable the way you select an app is you look at it and the people that have used it say it feels magic like it feels like it's being telepathic if i if you look at the facebook app and go like that no i think this is the you just do your hand like this to to click on an app so anything you're looking at you go like this and it clicks on it now there's cameras all around this thing so you don't even have to have your hand in a specific place you could just be down here you look at the app and click on it and it opens and apparently the eye tracking is like it's like magic whatever your eye is looking at it can tell that that's what you're looking at Ooh. Ooh. so it's it's now is all this technology good or bad is this terrorist are we are we getting separated from each other or are we is that bringing us together i i, I guess it depends on how we use it right, right? it's uh, that's that's every technology has had that question right. attached to it true uh, every Every single one, from the invention of the wheel. But just they're this, like, wait a second! Now everybody's going to get further away from me. <laughs> no. But but just think of the miracle. Like, say you were like, you know, you were in a you're in a wheelchair or something. You could just be doing stuff in your wheelchair, like you're actually really doing it. Mm hmm Oh, it's definitely going to be an incredible aid for people that that yeah that. It's all a double-edged sword, whatever that whatever that phrase means. <laughs> now, when it, when is like you said, people are already using it, but when is that expected for mass release? Oh, you could buy it now. Here, that's that's a weird rub of the, these new goggles. Is it's thirty five hundred bucks, three thousand five hundred dollars entry. So I don't, I don't even understand that. So obviously, it's not <laughs> he didn't, anything. He didn't, he didn't understand it, but in two weeks we'll come over here and he'll have he'll have three pairs of them for us to wear. <laughs> for us to wear. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, it's a business expense. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. We can write it off. Yeah, we can write that off. I I didn't read the directions. I figured it out myself. Here we go. It's definitely the future, though. I mean, this the stuff that they've been doing with the virtual reality the last few years. You could feel the promise, but you could tell why no one was doing it especially when you just put it on and it's a little claustrophobic and right. you feel you can only spend a few minutes in there before you're just like okay i'm bumping into everything right. i'm knocking everything off the tables but this you can really see how in a hundred right. years that's that's how we're going to do everything right. and and it's it is pretty cool that you don't need a tv room anymore it's just you want to watch TV? Everybody puts on their goggles, and I don't know. It, it's I, it's definitely the future. <laughs> hey, the the whole TV. I used Did to have, you ever do Joe's goggles? Did you try those at the beach? Just or, just for briefly. Just for a second. Just for a second. Joe has the the. Yeah. That was the night the I got sick. Oculus. So now I associate that with the. With blood and my yeah, that, uh, I remember you got sick that right when we were doing that. But it was I it, don't think it, there it was is a correlation, but you know, right. But in my mind, there is bad timing. Yeah. Now, from what you talk about, what like that seems so archaic, but that was to me like so like you just like your hands are guns all of a sudden. You're like mm -hmm. you know just <laughs> like you said like I don't know why, but I totally lost balance and like because my brother I'm not, my. Two nephews like stood around me like you're gonna be all over the place. We're gonna keep you so you don't knock the Christmas tree down and everything because <laughs> you just like you know you you can't keep any your boundaries are totally gone. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, mm -hmm. you're not you're not tuned in to what's really around you. That's what's so neat about these is the see through ability of it to where and the augmented reality thing is just so fun because it can actually. 
make games out of the world you're already sitting in. It could be like Duck Hunt, but things will like be popping up behind stuff that's already in the house or whatever. Right. Like it's superimposing things that aren't real on top of what is well, real. Well, then like a couple of years ago, emerging. they tried to make glasses like that. Then some, mm -hmm. but that was like a failure. Yeah, one, the Google it? Google glasses. That never took off, did it? Never took off. It was just too too weird. So how big are these things? Like they're actually you they're can... full on like ski mask okay. kind of all all the, and apparently a little heavy. Hmm. It's fascinating technology though. They they they're already inventing these these three sixty treadmill contraptions where when you go to the arcade in the future you'll put on the goggles, strap into a harness and stand on this three sixty treadmill that can detect your your feet movements. And so you'd be like playing full body, full immersion yeah. video games where if you you run this way, like whichever. Have you ever, have you ever read the book Ready Player One? It's exactly like yeah. that. Exa yeah. Like that's reality right. now. They have that technology. Yeah. It's happened. That's a fun movie. I didn't like it the first time I watched it, but enjoyed it the yeah. second time <laughs> I watched it. I don't Man. think I could ever say that about anything. Uh, that you didn't like it the first time, but you liked it the second time? Because why would you watch it again? <laughs> exactly. I hear you. <laughs> never a book? That, that's never a, a book that you, for some reason, read twice and liked it the second time? I don't remember. I couldn't name one right now like mm -hmm. that. It there makes may, sense that you would never do that. Yeah. I mean, I have a lot of great books that Food. I've never read twice. There's food you didn't like the first oh, time, yeah. now, but food, liked it the second but time. But tastes change. Tastes do change. Well, music, I, my, uh, every album I get, I listen to it at least three times, like within the first little bit I get it. And then I just put it away and maybe not listen to it. I mean, if I like it, I'll listen to it a lot. But if I don't like it, I'll put it away and pull it out. And some of them that I didn't like at all or had no interest, then they just, I mean, like you said, you don't know why, but they just click with you. That you're in a different mood or, you know. Yeah, mm -hmm. uh, that kind of makes sense. Well, and, 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 you know, with what you're saying, too, that, uh, you know, at different times in your life, like if you read uh, a book when you're 25, you're not going to get the same thing as when you read it at 55. Right. You have different life experiences to compare it to. So mm -hmm. that could be true with what you're saying, too. So. Right. So that makes sense. Yeah, we assume that. But it... just to do it, just to, to say, okay, I'll... I mean, there had to be a special thing of somebody pulling your arm and saying, come here, you're going to like it this time. Right, right. <laughs> but taste change, that's an interesting observation because I always assumed with with food that it was like a actual physical, biological changing of the taste buds in some way. But maybe it's more like the record that 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 there's something in our psychology that changes, that well, makes the yeah, taste. I think it works both ways, but there's definitely a psychological effect. And, and just, I've been thinking about, here's here's a, just a little tidbit of data, uh, going back to those numbers again. I read this uh, in a book, uh, well, my sister sent me this article about the bird calls. Mm -hmm. But in the article, they were talking about birds and the sounds and everything and they were saying that uh, now what was the th what's the thought taste and uh, smell that they're basically the same thing except that with um, and if you think about food and taste and smell mm -hmm. and you know if you have a cold you can't t you know the right. taste and smell and then the, and the what he said was that just this one sentence I thought was very interesting. He said that um, the smell is 20,000 times stronger than taste. Wow. Because you're tasting with liquid and solids and you're smelling with gases. Hmm. So it's a, you know, you're doing the same type of thing. You've got a chemoreceptor that's sending, it's getting a message from a molecule and it's sending that message to your brain. But with taste and smell, 
you're, the one of the differences, I never thought about it that way, is the, the physical state of matter of what you're doing. Right. With taste. You're, you're not tasting the gases. No. You're, you're, you're ta not smelling the solids yeah. or the liquid. But with smell, exactly. Mm -hmm. So, you know, and so it's, uh, and, it, and the fact is that gases are 20,000, there's, you know, 20,000 times density wise. Mm -hmm. uh, which led me into thinking about twenty thousand is a heck of a lot. That's a lot. I yeah, mean, I mean, that's. I don't think mathematically people understand when you say twenty thousand times right. how much that is because we don't really understand after three times. Right. Twice. And here's what's confusing about that, if you think about it, is that two times and double and adding one are the same thing. So you get fooled mathematically immediately. And you think, well, if it's double or two times, it just means you added one. But three times, now you're talking about three and eight. Right. But then when you talk about six, you're talking about a million <laughs> versus, you know, seven. Right. <laughs> it's, just, it's just amazing. 20,000. 20,000 20, times. So your sense of smell is 20,000 times uh, more adept at figuring stuff out than your taste buds. Mm -hmm. So I thought we, that was... Percy loves this conversation. <laughs> he's, <laughs> he's all we, in we it. we got to multiply our 20,000 for him by another 20,000. Yeah, he says, uh, you guys are apparently nothing. apparently dogs and their sense of smell is something we can't even begin uh, yeah. to fathom. You know who's good is fish. People don't realize that they're covered uh, not their smell, but their their senses uh, for molecules. Well, I guess it would be, well, it would be smell. Do they smell? There's well, no gases I mean, underwater, is there? There are gases, but that's not what they're smelling. They're smelling the liquid molecules, so it's a form of taste. Hmm. They're tasting the water. That's how salmon can find themselves upstream. Uh, that's the biggest mystery I've run into in biology was how can a you take a salmon out of the river and put him in the middle of the ocean and he can find his way back to that stream yeah. no matter what. He's going to find that one stream because the chemicals in that water are, he identifies with them and can, and can taste them all the way back up. No, talk about for humans, for, <laughs> for, for, for humans taste and smell, you think of somebody that you smell some food that you never had before. Do you think you'd be able to guess what it tastes like? Or do you think you'd not guess, but have a good idea of what it would taste like? I, I, I don't know. I think it would be an individual there. I think, I think sometimes a lot of things that, ta that taste because of what we were just talking about don't have a smell. But they have, but you can taste them mm -hmm. once you get down well, to the well, you, I mean, I, when you were talking about it, like, you like spaghetti, you smell spaghetti, you automatically can, before you even eat it, you know what it tastes like. That's association. Yeah, right. yeah. But I wonder if somebody gave you a smell and it's just, just like something sitting there you never had before, if you'd be able, would that smell make you, would it give you a mental picture of what oh, it would certainly. taste like? All the time. That is fascinating. Just I'm just like going through my brain, thinking of all the smells of the bacon right. or an Indian restaurant popcorn, or popcorn, yeah, yeah. and it's like, a I'm getting really hungry. <laughs> but, but, but B but, it's but. just so fascinating, and the and the the ter terrible smells, the stuff you'd never want to eat because of this. Oh, that's bad. But like, but you, but but also, could, what if somebody could make a like a graham cracker smell like popcorn? <laughs> do you think do you think your mouth would taste popcorn or a graham cracker when you bit into it? <laughs> I mean, it's, it's, it's got to be able to produce that smell somehow. Yeah. Well, yes. Yeah, so, I think it would line up. So you think the graham cracker would taste like popcorn? If it smelled like it. That's what I want. That's weird. Because you were saying it's twenty. The the smell is twenty thousand times more. Yeah, I wonder if it would taste like a. Well, it's got to be able to. Or, or did your brain like this? There's no way it could your smell like, like it if it didn't have the stuff that smells like that. Like, that's where my brain is. Well, like, so let's, let's say you had a Bond taste test and you went into a movie theater and just smelled like popcorn and they gave you a graham cracker. Would you be able to taste the graham cracker or would you taste? You'd taste the graham, you'd taste the graham popper, but you'd smell the popcorn. 
So your brain wouldn't be like sort of overridden. Would be with I think it would be. I think your brain would be definitely confused. It right? would be such a fascinating experiment. You just all you have to do is like isolate your nose right. from the rest of your senses and pipe in right. the wrong smell right. for different foods and right. see what just to see that be what weird? it tasted like would be fascinating. Just to make, just to mix up the smell and the food. I would, I would, I would pay ten dollars to, <laughs> to sit in that booth and just. I'm sure Google will come up with something you can put on. Right. And do that. <laughs> I'm, not sure, I'm not sure what kind of data you could derive from that, but the experience of it would be so interesting. And if you if you if you if you were blind tested, like. I wonder how long it would take you to say, well, like popcorn and a graham cracker, you would know you weren't eating popcorn because it was different. Texture. But, yeah, but I wonder if it was like, um, oh, my gosh, that's, that's weird to think about. Because <laughs> smell doesn't, like, if somebody brought out a pizza and you were sitting there with your, you're looking the other way, you would say, we're having pizza, and you could taste it, like, before you even turned around and saw what it was sitting mm -hmm. over there. Oh, yeah. Well, uh, you know, one of the things with COVID is that, people would lose their some some of them one of the characteristics is the loss right. of smell i think that's that's it's really debilitating mm -hmm. it really uh, cripples a lot of activities that, mm -hmm. you, that surprises you more than you'd think yeah one of my cousins put a live electrical plug in his mouth and he doesn't have like a sense of taste anymore Ooh, wouldn't that be horrible that's sad you know a way to to uh experiment on this a little bit maybe is like like jelly beans right. don't have a smell but they're a var variety of flavors like jelly belly you can't smell that they even have popcorn flavored right, yeah, jelly yeah. bellies or whatever but you'd, you'd, you'd have all these jelly beans and maybe blindfolded and then you just put like a dipstick of a certain smell right like butter popcorn and eat the eat the jelly bean and just I don't know. What? Maybe your class could do an experiment. I don't know what kind of data you derive from it, but I would just like the experience. That would of be it. cool. Just put a little dipstick of a weird smell. Oh, that's Indian food. That's cherry. I don't know. I don't, it would be interesting to just feel how the impact of different well, smells on different flavors. I have seen those things where, like, there's a, you know, like you're behind like a screen. There's a hole. And there's like you know different foods there, and people can't see them. Mm -hmm. And how hard they have just identifying it by just the taste. Mm -hmm. Like it's like the smell doesn't come up to you or anything. You're just right. like, what is this? Yeah, you eat it, and you're like, it's oh. not the same if you can't smell. Like you it. sort of can identify it's, it, but it's classic how you, get, you take medicine when you're a can. Yeah. <laughs> you know, Why was that? I never even thought about that. Yeah, your parents would always it, say, hold your nose. Yeah, it's it, you can. You'll taste it less. It'll be easier to swallow if you don't have the smell. Cues and if you don't eat in. it soon, you're gonna die because I'm <laughs> right. not letting go. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> now, for, now, from from a from a chemistry standpoint, like does does Seven Up and chicken noodle soup have any medicinal purposes? Like we used to get that all the time, and I've heard other kids say when they were sick, their parents would just bring them like a Mountain Dew or Seven Up and. Well, I think I think a lot of the chicken soup thing is not. I don't think nutritionally it makes that much difference, but I do think it's the smell. It, mm. It's a warming. It, it's a. I don't know. What do you think about that? A comforting uh, smell. I think I think a lot of it's just the smell, and the and the warm the warmth that comes off of that mm -hmm. right. uh, settles settles the inside of your mouth and things like that, mm -hmm. and the warmth going down. So, uh, and the texture is is good, but. And the taste is, you know, okay, but right. I think the smell has a lot to do with how chicken soup is effective. Right. And the 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 faith that it helps. Yeah. Like, like, you know, your your mom's telling you that this will cure you, so yeah. that's pretty. Right. And it was made by her. There's a lot of love involved right. in the chicken soup. Campbell's and, always made mine. Yeah, that's. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I do think Campbell's has a little additional medicinal properties to it myself. I'm like, oh, you got to have Camp either either made homemade by someone that loves you or Campbell's, Campbell's. <clears throat> for sure. Because I grew up, we didn't. I can't think of a single cold we had that my mom ever gave us medicine. We didn't really get sick that much. I still don't get sick very much, thank goodness. But if we did, it was always just you know, here's a 
here's a, some seven up and a <laughs> mom <laughs> always gave me flat flat so flat yeah. seven up. my mom would open it and say let it sit for a little bit yeah it had God, to be flat i forgot about that yeah. Yeah. they didn't want the bubbles they didn't yeah. want i forgot all about didn't that just, yeah she would open the can to and say let it sit there mm -hmm. send a lot right. of gas down there saltines flat yeah. seven up and chicken noodle soup <laughs> i, I want to get sick and be taken care of <laughs> And then, and then once you were asleep, they would get a syringe and shoot you full of medicine, so you didn't even know it. I, oh, mom, it worked. <laughs> I used to. I I have such fond memories of the flu as a kid. Like I used, <laughs> I used to. If if I was, if I got the flu, I would be so happy. Yeah, <laughs> just I am. Well, so... you get to stay home from school. You get to watch as much TV as you want. You're waited on hand and foot. Mom would always pamper me with the chicken noodle soup and the flat Seven Up. And, you know, you had to throw up a few times during the day. It was a small price to pay to live like a king. I am so glad. I am. I, and, a, and any little sign that I might be sick, I would just be initially elated. Like, oh, my God, I'm sick. This, I, is, this is happening. I am so glad you Never said that. Never sick in the summer. <laughs> that, right. It's funny how it works. I am so glad you said Because probably like a couple times a year, I'll just think, man, I wish I was sick and somebody would take care of me. Like, and, 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 like, and, like it's like, how do you feel? Probably a couple of comic books would make me feel better. <laughs> <laughs> and they'd be, all right, we'll be right back. They'd come back with some, with some football, baseball cards, and a, and a couple of comics. Oh, oh you like, oh, like just to have somebody pamper you is so nice. Mm -hmm. It really was. <laughs> oh, my goodness. I broke all my matchbox cars. Can you give me some more cars? <laughs> <laughs> Please don't let me get well. Please don't let me get well. Mar Margie's <laughs> reminding me of Vicks. Oh, you have to, see, you have to throw in the Vicks. I, I never even had Vicks. My mom was oh, like, really? "Oh my up. gosh, yeah. I love the Vicks." Yeah, the Vicks. Yeah, that was a good smell. Mm-hmm. Is that what you rub on your chest, or is uh -huh. like the Vicks? Yeah. Maybe the Vicks and put a little vapor cloth on it. Opens you right up. And a little head over a steam bath. These are colds, and we're gone from flu to to. A, Good cold, <laughs> boy. A little towel over a steam bath with Vicks in it. You ever? Say we never did. You that. ever do that? I've done that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> no. What was the best medicine for a hangover? No, oh, hangover cures. McDonald's Ooh. hamper. Yeah, that that, <laughs> that 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 is a move, isn't it? Good old. It's two two times you're allowed fat food, fat, uh, fast food with a fat food. <laughs> That's a good slip, actually. But two times I allow myself fast food without a guilty conscience as a road trip and a hangover. Yeah. And then you've earned it. Yeah. I was I was telling somebody a story today actually of a friend of mine woke up. I mean, she'd been out partying and had a bad hangover, and she wanted a Seven Up, or so I think it was a, she wanted a Sprite. So she called this Chinese restaurant that delivered and said, can you bring me a Sprite? And they go, we only deliver, minimum order is $25. She said, bring me $25 worth of Sprite. She said, the guy showed up with a bag full of loose Sprite cans. <laughs> She's like, I didn't care what it cost. I needed a Sprite. Just bring me $25 oh goodness, worth of Sprite. That's, it. That's, 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 that's something about Sprite. Oh, my God. You got a hangover cure? No. No. Time. Uh, right. I mean, I, I think uh, my first thought was three hours of taking of sleep and then hitting the bacon and eggs and mm -hmm. uh, getting yeah. a, a good breakfast. Good greasy breakfast. But so many, so many people, and I've done it too, just the McDonald's, the single, not the big hamburger, where it's the single <laughs> burger, like two or three of those, and you just mm -hmm. go lay back down for but a little I, bit. But when I first got up from my hangover, I couldn't eat, so I couldn't. Mm -hmm. uh, right. Oh. Yeah, I was full of misery. <laughs> Coca Cola for me, not Seven Up. Coca Cola. Uh, yeah. What well, they they call that? Aspirin, carbonated aspirin. I, uh, there's some aspirin term for Coca Cola for a hangover. So what's that like if you're torn and you're hungover and you gotta get in the drive? Is that nightmare? You don't want to think about I, it. I can't. I can't even remember. I could always sleep really good in a moving vehicle, right. but if you're driving, you don't want to drive hungover. 
I mean, luckily, the always, always like the the drummer in the amusement didn't really drink, so if we were all hung over. He, we always had. It's always somebody on the team right. that's like the designated driver. You think about that the night before. Right. It's like, all right, you guys have fun. I'll drive tomorrow. Sort of plan ahead. Oh, Heather's why is here. Water preemptive. Before you pass out, it's lots water, of water, yeah. and if you you can preemptively yeah. help your hangover a lot. Dehydration, but, yeah. yeah. Well, that's a, so that's something else. What when I was hungover, when I am hungover, one of those uh, Lipton instant soup packets hmm. with all the salt in it and the just salt. the water. Oh my God, is little tiny noodles floating around in it. Oh man. <laughs> I'm going to go home and get drunk tonight just so I can have some of that tomorrow morning. Yeah. <laughs> I remember sitting there with like just holding the pot in my hand and just eating that stuff like, oh my God, this tastes like the best food in the history of the world. Hmm. Definitely as you get older, the for me, the hangover, I still enjoyed, I always like sort of the hangover. It's sort of reminiscent of the childhood flu. You just sort of can watch TV <laughs> and eat bad food and you pamper yourself or smother get yourself pampered. in the Vicks. But as I get older now, if I if I have a if I let loose on a night we 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 let loose last Saturday night and had some drinks and played some music and had some fun and the next day I was hung over and it was great. I just sort of got some fast food and watched some some bad T V and right. it was just heaven on earth. But then the next day well, I mean, as I get older, the hangover is not just a day. <laughs> it's a couple of days. Right. It's it's the next day that was the worst. Mm. The, the, the first day was just like a normal hangover. But then the Monday, wow. I was just like, oh, this is, the, this is the bad one. I don't know. Do you have that at all? I am. Get... I usually have, like you say, I have a hangover. Then, like, say up Saturday, Sunday, I have a hangover, and Monday, my body's so stiff. I'm like, how am I gonna make it to work? Right. And I'm like, oh my god, I can barely get down the hallway. Just like everything is sore. That's like, a new it's like, thing. My it's like, what did I do? I, just, <laughs> I was sitting at a bar drinking. I didn't like exercise or lift weights. Did I do? Did I save somebody the night by flipping a car over? Come oh, on, you'll be all right. <laughs> <laughs> But I'll be going to work like everybody's like, "You all right? Yeah, I'm fine." Oh. oh. <laughs> <laughs> I noticed that with Jam Cruise, I did it ten years in a row, and every year I would come back, and it would be another day added to how long it took me to recover from oh. it. Just the the getting older. After after the tenth year, it was just too too many days to recover. Man. That might be a good thing because I think the way, you know, I'm stage four liver and kidneys right now because I never saw the second day. Right. I was already drinking again. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Hair of the dog is yeah. the answer yeah. that we haven't talked about. Yeah. Yet. Oh, yeah. No, not, right. that, not that I want you to be like me, for sure. But uh, that's the price you pay. Mm -hmm. So your body's doing a better job of communicating with you than mine did. Right. Mine was lying to me. <laughs> now, did you ever do hair of the dog? Just say I got to get right back in it. Or? Well, that that was the first thing I thought about when you asked about touring. Because back when I toured, we drank every night, right. and it wasn't like a hangover wasn't part of it. Right. You just... <clears throat> it was all one big flow right. or whatever, and it was just hair of the dog every day. Now, how much did you smoke back then? As much as I wanted. <laughs> <laughs> That's real nice. That's a good answer. I like that. <laughs> buy him by the case. I don't know. Send me 25. I, just, I want That's one. Right. You want a cigarette? I have 25 cases, 25 packs to live with. <laughs> That's why they sell them by the court. <laughs> hey, would you wake up and start smoking? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Now, did you ever smoke on stage? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Would you were you one of those guys who put your cigarette up in the guitar when you were playing? Oh yeah. Wow. Yeah. Were you smoking while you were sitting on the paper? <laughs> oh. 
Now, see, this is an inside joke <laughs> that sorry. we don't want to explain. It's the second time y'all have referenced yeah, it. Yeah, you had to be there. I, I'm not going to, I'm not, I'm not telling you guys Wait, any more stuff. Work. You couldn't do that because the red, the the, the the red ember on the end of the cigarette. You didn't want that red involved. <laughs> I I I I used to. I mean, it was because I, I I performed bef when smoking was still happening everywhere, right, and right. then they started passing rules about how you couldn't smoke. Oh, right. But <clears> then there was this loophole. It, that for theatrical performances, if the character in the play smoked, right, right. you were allowed to put on that theatrical performance in a character. So I would, there were there were venues that I would light up a cigarette in because I was still a little <laughs> pompous jerk, young punk, or whatever, it was and I'd be like, I'm playing a character. <laughs> it was that. <laughs> is that this is my theatrical performance. My character smokes. <laughs> Is that Philip Marlowe up there, the private detective? <laughs> and I'm getting ready to give you a show, kids. <laughs> I did actually. I, I, I did that more than once. But the my my out was was I had some magic involved, and I would be in a venue that didn't allow smoking. I would light up a cigarette. I would say that bit about the. It's a theatrical performance, and I'm playing a character. And I'd take one good satisfying drag off of it, and then I would make it vanish by the oh. as, as the bouncers were approaching or whatever. I would vanish the cigarette and wow. act like I didn't know what they were talking about. <laughs> it was a pretty elaborate ruse just to get a little nicotine. <laughs> <laughs> I, I hope y'all don't remind that, that I'm going to repeat one of the tricks I did earlier today. <laughs> <laughs> That's the tenth time he's done that trick tonight. But I definitely, when you when you talked about putting the cigarette into the headstock of the yeah. strings, those are some good memories there. That was a long time ago that that was possible on any level. Oh man! Yeah, that's good stuff. <laughs> so McDonald just gets a thumbs up for the morning after. They got a little, they got a Jabber John bump today. That's right. You know, there you go, McDonald's. <laughs> free of charge. First one's free. First one's free. <laughs> if you want more, you're going to have to pay for it. I was reading something about why their drinks taste better. They get their drinks in canisters and their straws are bigger, so you get more of the carbonation or something. Bigger like straws. Yeah. That's interesting. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah, that's, that's when, that's the highlight of my week is, uh, I buy the two liter A and W root beers and then you open that you had it in the back of the refrigerator, it's cold and you pour it out, two liters and you pull up four liter gas glass to go and then all of a sudden it's there and you chug that. <laughs> <laughs> it knocks you. <her>, just <laughs> that carbonation just knocks you right up to your nose. Yeah. You're tasting and smelling and right. goggling at the same time. It's wonderful. I just, sometimes when I'm real depressed, I'll just go down there and buy no, one. No, no. Mm -hmm. wh what is that smell that is from root beer? Is that is it sassafras or what is it? It's root beer. Is, uh, not sassafras. But, root, root beer has a distinct root, smell. It's, uh, it's a what is it? it? What is it? Root, root beer. It's a root. <laughs> <laughs> I smell the root. It's a, it's, it's a root. No, but it's, root beer has a very distinct smell. Like you I know. know but yeah, it's a, it's. Um, but it's not sassafras, is it? It's a, it's a plant like that. I don't Obviously, know what it it's is. A root. But it's got. It's got a. Let's ask Percy on the. It's got a beautiful, yeah. wonderful smell. Yeah. It's got a good taste. I've, I've, now that's one taste I have never stopped liking. Is my, my, yeah, I have, like I'm not doing my artichoke carts like I was. Oh, and, wow. uh, just, just lost its flavor. Um, you, you ate an awful lot of those. I did. I overdid it. Well, I tend to do that. Yeah. yeah. You're not a half stepper. No, I go in. If I'm You're going in, yeah, I walk right on in. Slam the door behind me. And Step and a half. -er. I'm here. Let's play. <laughs> <laughs> I'm here. To, I'm here to eat your heart, your artichoke heart. Ah. So, according to Percy on our Discord server, root beer gets its unique flavor from a combination of various roots, herbs, and spices, 
the primary ingredient responsible for its distinct taste is the root or bark of the sassafras tree. Uh, you son of a gun. <laughs> so is that the... Uh, so uh, stand correct. So it's that smell p plus other smells, I guess, other things they put in it? Or yeah, just there's a, other things in yeah. it, but that's the main thing. Oh, uh, darned. You got me. Contains a compound called saffrol. S A F R O L E. Am I saying that right? Yeah. Saffrol. However, since saffrol has been found to be potentially carcinogenic, modern root beer recipes often use artificial sassafras flavoring or a sassafrol free extra extract. That's all I do. I do, I do those three. <laughs> I, I go, you go in the food line, you can order either one. I go, give me the sassafras over the three. I don't want that carcinogen. Right, right. You want you want the. Who knows what you're getting? <laughs> Nobody knows what you're getting when you order it. Now, I never th like if you're smoking, does does one drink go better if you're smoking and one is like? Do you have like a drink that's associated like this tastes good with a cigarette and one that this doesn't or tastes better <laughs> without a cigarette? Definitely whiskey in a, in a <laughs> cigarette. <laughs> that's really, really nice. Yeah. More. So, I mean, like, you know, like a. If I think of like a cold beer, I think of like a little bit of sweat on my brow. Right. So I don't necessarily think yeah. of a cigarette. Right. Like that. Well, they're in the same family of chemicals. They're shit that'll kill you. Mm -hmm. No, but that, 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 <laughs> it's a family of chemicals. <laughs> no, but it's interesting. Like, like the technical term. <laughs> but I, I mean, that makes total yeah, sense. A beer, fast. you can enjoy a beer, but you don't really like you like you said you just just mow the grass, you just want to sit down and have a beer. But if you're out with friends having a cigarette, you want some whiskey. If it, That's like, yeah, that makes sense. Mm -hmm. mm. Man. Hmm? Now, did you ever smoke cigarettes or you just went right to the pipe? I've never smoked cigarettes. Did you ever I, smoke a cigarette? I'm sure you did. I right? tried. I think I had a bad experience with grapevine when I was nine years old in Hillcrest, oh. up in the woods, and tried to smoke grapevine, and uh, I just <laughs> Grapevine, huh? Was that a thing? Yeah. That People was, did that? Because yeah. they were hollow stems the or hollow, something? It was a hollow stem, and you weren't getting anything but burned end of it, and uh, but that was just something little kids were told that you could smoke grapevine. I think, like, Daddy was smoking cigarettes. Not Daddy wasn't, but, you know. But, oh, wait a minute, so you didn't put anything in it? It was just a vine? I didn't, and I only did it once, and I, and it hurt my lungs so bad that I just don't like that heat and stuff in my lungs. Gosh, so he's, he, he's right. Once he doesn't like it, he doesn't try again. That's true, yeah. Wow. <laughs> look, look, Steve, here's a real cigarette. Get it out of my face. <laughs> I've smoked that. <laughs> I've smoked a great well, vine you know, before. It's, it's great because I have an addictive personality. You know, I, I'd get addicted to things, but uh, something like that, I just wouldn't go there. Mm -hmm. It's, you know. Lucky. So. Uh, well, I really am, because uh, it wasn't any, you know, it wasn't like I rejected her. Right. Stephanie in the chat says we smoked catnip. Did it, did it do anything? Did that work? I remember it, we definitely smoked she used spice to poop in a drawer box stuff like when I was a kid. Smoked what? Like oregano. Oh. Just to. Uh, yeah. Now, do you have do you have any foods that you've eaten and then you got sick that you won't eat anymore? My brother won't eat. My brother, not that he loved chili, but we had chili a lot. And he got sick one day when he was like twenty over chili. He's ever had chili. You I think it, had chili I was like, one the chili. He's like, no, I just remember being sick. I tell you what, I won't eat Southern Comfort anymore. <laughs> That's for sure. Just the smell of it is enough to set yeah. me off. But so, again, so, so like grapevine, yeah. but but like. Well, like then you said when you got sick doing that virtual reality thing, so that stopped. You've never had a food. That oh you got yeah, sick? I have them. I'm not. I'm not sure. But, I mean, I, I I have definitely have foods that I just don't eat because I had a bad experience right. with them. I think we all associate mm -hmm. things right. a lot of times. So, uh, with uh, and and it goes that was good good things too. Sometimes you you like popcorn because right. you're in the movies. Or, right. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Growing up, my, my nephew, my oldest nephew, I mean, I love pickles. I could eat pickles every day. He was like a little kid, pickles. and he loved pickles, too. And then he got sick one time eating them. I didn't know about it. So he came up to visit my parents and family camp. I took a big jar of pickles. Like, no, I don't eat pickles anymore. I'm like, why, why? 
I got sick. I was like, God, this pickles had nothing to do with it. He's like, no, I was eating pickles, and I got sick. And he didn't eat pickles for like 10 years. <laughs> Is he back doing pickles He's, now? he's back now. I was like, oh, man. <laughs> he came back. What kind of pickles do you like? Just a good old dill pickle. A man. good old dill pickle. Yeah. You know, I can eat a sweet gherkin, but I, yeah, I, I don't like it. I don't like a dill pickle. Don't like oh, a dill God. pickle. They were too sour. Bread and butter. Yeah. I guess yeah. I like all pickles. No, I'm not a pickle person. I'm a sweet pickle. If I had to choose, I'd go for a sweet pickle. For <laughs> we sure. were we were riding one time. We were stopped in Charlottesville, like some like a little small market, and they had one of those big jars of pickles. And me and my buddy used to get pickles, and we just we could you know, get a couple of beers and sit in the backyard with them, some pickles and drink beer. <laughs> and we said, "Oh man, give us two of those Simpler pickles." Simpler days. <laughs> yeah. We said to the guy, "Give us two of those pickles." And he reached down with his tongue, he put in some paper, and he goes, "They've been in there a long time, but I think they're still good." And we're like, oh, "Maybe just put them back in." <laughs> and like, you don't want to buy some pickles that might still be good when you're on the road. <laughs> I don't think those pickles were good. No, pull over quick. I've <laughs> never eaten. Pickles again. <laughs> Can't even smell them. Yeah, I'm trying to think of a food that I quit because of one bad experience. I'm, don't, I'm not coming up with anything. I usually don't have. I, I don't have. Yeah, me neither. I don't have. An, I'm, I'm always too hungry to have a sickness take me away from food. <laughs> <laughs> And most foods, luckily I'm not allergic to anything, So, but most foods, even if I don't like them, I, I'll keep trying them just because of what you said earlier, the idea that maybe my taste buds have changed, whatever that phenomenon is. It, there, there's some things that I still don't understand, like caviar. But people love it so much, I'll keep trying it. Right. I, if, if I don't like it, but I will try it again. Okay, that's... Because I... I just maybe don't get it yet. That is, per Margie is writing in. She she had told me she doesn't eat so it was something that she doesn't eat. I said, stop saying you don't. You just say you don't. You you know you don't like it. You might eat it. She goes, oh, I won't eat it. I said, if somebody brought you something, they said this is my. You know, you don't like caviar, but they try this caviar. I said, I would just eat it to be polite and try again. So I'm glad you agree with that. It's yeah, like I'm, you wouldn't I'm just say no. You. I don't eat caviar. I'm, and turn I'm it away. right there with you. Anchovies. <laughs> Don't like them. I'll try it again, though. <laughs> if you if you think I should, well, by golly, we're already. We, it's the end of the show. We're done. Yeah. You got any food songs? I, I was just scanning my brain if I have a food song. I'm not sure. I mean, there's chicken and rice. I've written a couple. Of, I wrote a song called "Food." That would be a great song to do right now, but I don't, I don't remember how it goes. <laughs> Got any Chad Galactic, got any Chad Galactic song? <laughs> right. You know Chad that, does all food rap. You don't know the Oscar Mayer hot dog song? What is that mm. song? Oscar Mayer has a way of... Oscar Mayer has a way of B-O-L-O-G. <laughs> yeah, that's right. It wasn't hot dogs. It was close. I was close <laughs> there. <laughs> oh, yeah, we could just do food songs from commercials. What else is there? What was the old Coke song I like to teach the world to sing? Do you know like that? I like to teach the world to sing in perfect, perfect harmony. harmony. I'd like to buy the world a Coke to teach their company. That's the song I sing. <laughs> now, you know what words. <laughs> I, got, I, I would like to suggest that uh, when you say chicken and rice, that's a that's a food that associ you associated with a time, mm -hmm. and, and a lot of times that's what you do with food. You associate it with an event too. Mm -hmm. So I think in that sense, chicken and rice would be a good song to do to make it. Plus, I haven't heard it in a while, and I like it. Chicken and rice, chicken and rice on the stove, so nice. To be home, home. Bitter of feet, bitter of feet, bitter of feet, bitter of feet. I'm not alone, not alone. It's not just me, oh, it's not just me. I'm home, home, home. Out 
out there again Not onto the road, not into the wind Gonna stay right here with my family and friends I think that, line, that, that chorus was a little bit more romantic back when it wasn't true. <laughs> Need more wood, need more wood for the fire. The show feels good to be home. Home. Got to teach you how to play spoons. You ever tried to play spoons? I can probably pick it up. You ever tried it? You know what? I got a, a cheat. You saw how good I was at magic. You know I can pick up. <laughs> you know, the hardest part about playing spoons is not having them fall out of your hands. So we invented this here. It's two that's, spoons. That's like the that's like the beginner's chopstick. <laughs> <laughs> Training wheels. <laughs> All right, so you're going to want to hit it on your leg and bounce it on the palm of your hand. Yeah, there you go. Now you look like a... Coast to coast. Day to night, it's all good. There's no place like home. Home. And I ain't never going out there again. Not on the road, not into the wind. Stay right here with my family and friends. No, I ain't ever going out there again. Not onto the road, not into the wind. Gonna stay right here with my family and friends. Nailed it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we got a new addition there. <laughs> Thank yeah. you so much for watching, call, everybody. See you next call week. Call Ask Gap. He wants his music. That's <laughs> right. He's part of the band now. We got to write you in. Yeah, he's part of the band. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> Family friends. Let me show you something cool with these spoons. Is that a real instrument? You because made God that. gave us four fingers, and there's four beats to a bar. There's something magic about the spoons and that you can go. You ought to let him take us home and keep you from asking.